What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we are taking a look at a cool one from Shergroff. Um, now offered in a new color. I know that I've done a couple videos or some Instagrams and some TikToks. If you're not following me there, certainly follow me. I tend to reveal a few things a little earlier than normal there. Um, so this is the Quantium Ursus G10 in a new colorway, which is uh, obviously beige. Or as I want to call it, kind of like a military desert camo kind of color. Looks really good. Um, we're going to talk about this knife today in uh, in pretty overview detail like we normally do. And reminder, it's kind of a cup of coffee style chat. Nothing too crazy, not going into intricacies of design. Um, and also, this one's on the site right now. Bladezilla.ca. We are in Canada. We have uh, a lot of the stuff that we do on the channel in stock and ready to go. So this guy just added. There you go. Uh, Ursus Quantium, Chromax PM Blade, multi row bearings, blah blah blah, ready to go. Lots of picks, lots of cool stuff. There's my shout out for the website. And rather than watching, sitting through YouTube ads, you can sit through me talking about bladezilla.ca, which is my username, which is my Instagram, which is my TikTok, which is my threads, all that stuff. Follow me wherever you want, or just send me an email. <laughs> but that's not what this is about. This knife is what this video is about. So let's talk about it, let's get some measurements, let's go over it, let's mute my computer so it doesn't end up in this video, and uh, let's get on with it. We'll start with some measurements. Same measurements as all the other Quantiums, but we are coming in at, uh, let's turn that ringer off too, sorry guys. We are coming in at, there we go, eight and three quarter maybe? Eight and five eighths, eight and three quarter, I'd say, overall length. Uh, blade length, uh, just under four inches sharpened, eh, three and seven eighths, something like that. And uh, handle length, people have been asking that. So under five inches. But remember with this, it's a lot thinner than a normal carry on a handle. So it's pretty manageable to kind of carry around. And remember, so I'm extra large glove, and I've got room on there, no problem, to fit another finger. So um, don't worry too much about the size of this thing. In the Shergroff family, I don't have a 111, which is a size up from this, but I do have my Stellar that I feature in God knows how many videos. I do have my Neon, which should kind of give you the three main sizes that are kind of becoming the norms. Uh, so essentially 95 mil, I think this is 90 mil on the handle. I can't remember what the Stellar is. Um, and then a little bit shorter. So three and a half inch, I believe, is this guy. Three and a half, three and three quarter, four, somewhere ish in there. And reminder, guys, I'm going to take the middle size out of here. But depending on how I position this knife, right? Because remember, my camera's angled down towards it because I've got light coming from the other way. If I move this here, it's going to look a lot smaller. So just remember that when you're watching some of these videos, it's not as crazy as you think between the sizes. This is like a bug out. A lot of people love bug out size stuff, and this is just a little bit bigger. So there you go. Now in terms of other shear groffs, let's grab a F95. There's an F95NL, and because we're continuing on with a beige theme, uh, because that's what we're apparently doing as I go here and we make this up like we do every video, let's grab the other Quantum Ursus in beige. And there you go, there's your flavor of the, uh, the new colorways, which I think look terrific. Uh, a couple things, this guy's single row bearings, multi row bearings, and multi row bearings. So, because of the price point of this video, I'm going to kind of focus more in on the the starting off point of Shirogorov and kind of talk about the knives uh, because I think they present wicked, wicked value. And, uh, you know, I, I still think that at the price point these knives are offered, you're still getting more precision and rarity than you are, say, a Chris Reeves. I know it's a hot take. I know. But I think it's true. So... Um, we'll get back to this. Let's also compare it to a couple other knives here. Uh, we have our large Sabenza. 
There you go. Hopefully that's a good, uh, oh, let's move this up here a little bit. There you go, the large Sebenza. We've got our small Sebenza hiding somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Look for the little pigtail, there we go. There's our small, and remember the angles we talked about. So this is gonna look bigger than it does. And maybe I'll switch these around to just show you what I'm talking about. God, it looks small there. It's crazy, it's not that small, I swear. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, and then, just because I had a video I included my Umnuns on, and I had a few people ask about it, actually. I'll throw that in there. I don't include this typically in a lot of videos, uh, just because I always show my Chris Reeves, uh, my large Seb. A lot of people know the size. Um, I actually keep this guy around for that reason, because a lot of people know what size it is. And the Zahn is very similar, just a little thicker around the edges, less contoured, but very similar size-wise. But people had a lot of questions about the Zahn. It is, uh, if any knife had a cult-like following, it would be the, the Umbun Zahn from Chris Reeve. That one is not in Magna, Magna Cut, that's an S45. So uh, that'll be the questions people want to know. But in terms of this knife, uh, let's grab, uh, we've got a couple more Quantium colorways here. I'll grab what I have. We've got the dark blue. And we've got black. I don't, I think there's a green as well. And I've had one green go through, or was it two? Maybe I had a couple greens go through, but I never did any content with them. I've, uh, you know, typically these uh, value end pieces are kind of either, it's kind of funny, they're either used for like users, like heavy users, and people just don't care about them, or they're typically entry levels into the Shirogorov lineup. Uh, to, to feel the ergos, to feel the multi rope bearing system, etc. But most people, once they go from this, they jump right to the top. Um, you know, they go up to the, the high end production, the F95T, the Quantum Gen 2s, the Hades, or Hades. Um, it, it's just funny how that works sometimes. So um, once you kind of jump up there, people are less likely to use that knife on a heavy manner. And, and myself, I had. Uh, um, I had an. Uh, one of these a while ago that uh, the reason I brought it in was to be a, a carry but it never never got there and uh, a friend wanted it and she gone but I see a lot of value in these quantiums I really do because you get the full sheer Gorov experience in a lighter weight package at a price point that's literally half the price of uh, the high-end production stuff so anyway there's your three quantiums, Ursus, that I have on hand. Um, if there's, if you want me to stock the green, I can certainly bring it in. But um, right now, I think three's, I think, good enough for that area of the category. So beige, what does it bring to the table? Well, it brings a Chromax blade, as you can see, real, real sharp. Sure, go off anodizing there. And the logo looks good or etching, sorry, Chromax PM, which is essentially uh, uh, LMAX, think of it as that. Um, someone was telling me that Chromax was actually Japanese. Now, I, I don't know if it is or not, I really don't know much about Chromax, other than it's largely based around LMAX, okay? And the PM particle metal, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a solid, solid steel, it's a workhorse. Now, in terms of this knife, um, let's give it a weight. Let's, uh, let's do that, because it weighs very light, like, it's, it's extremely lightweight, um, which is what makes it so carryable. Any guesses? Three, it's got to be under four, three, nah, let's zero it, I'm saying 3.6. What am I at? 3.8, is that what I'm seeing? So 3.8 versus the Titanium Quantum Ursus, which is 4.4, 4.5. So almost a full ounce lighter. Think about that. So full tie handle, right? Versus G10, almost a full ounce lighter. So that's what makes it a lot more carryable. So let's get rid of this. And that's kind of found across the lineup in a couple different models. And just because I have them here, I'm going to show you. 
So we have the same essential knife, same steel, same tie back frame and, and uh, just lighter, right? We have that same exact thing happening right now on the high-end production world with the F95. Let's grab blue. So we have a Hattie, right? Which is an F95 with a front carbon scale. And then we have the Turtle, which is an F95 high-end production. It's essentially the same formula, same knife, M390, M390, you know, a little bit of adjustments and tweaking, obviously, but it's essentially the same style knife, just with a carbon front scale, one ounce lighter, or three quarters of an ounce, I just use the term ounce, it's within an ounce lighter, so, which is cool. So let's get rid of these guys, but it's, oh, it's a light, the hat is so light, I love it. But uh, in this world, you know, I don't think they've ever done uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if I've seen a, a carbon front handled Quantum. Uh, because this is kind of new, right? It's the Quantium is like a Hattie, Quanti, um, right? So that's where that comes from. Um, in terms of the two, we have, I think, the same back end of it. Back it up. So same back scale or back uh, frame. They're both frame locks. Uh, the G10 might be a little different on there. I can't tell right now looking at the screen just the way this the lights hitting it Maybe they have a different pattern. I don't know. They look pretty similar to me But the layup on them is identical between the two quantums quantum quantium But my god is this one the beige quantum way lighter um, And I think let me just check the inside of the frame Yep, yeah. I am right and they have very light milling on the inside of this. Now, some of the sites um, actually talk about this. They, they call the milling on the inside of the tie side here, lightly milled. And you can see what that lightly milled means. It just means that pocket on a high-end finish would be, they'd, they'd put more work into kind of taking more material out of that. But they do mill it on the inside of the tie side and then on the inside of the, uh, sorry, inside of the G10 side, there's nothing. Uh, because they don't really need to. It's already lightweight enough, right? They really don't need that. So let's get rid of my light and continue saving up for a flashlight. Um, Balance-wise, I'm assuming it's going to be balanced, right? Like all of them are right in the front here. Yes, I'm right, right where you'd carry it. It's perfectly balanced. So maybe that's why they don't need to mill it out a ton, because that's not going to really change anything. Now, it is a uh, frame lock. We do have the metal lock bar insert slash over travel stop, which is replaceable. And I always say this, that metal lock bar insert isn't just about uh, being an over travel stop or being a material that kind of wears down and is replaceable. It's about tuning the two materials, titanium frame, Chromax, blade, uh, don't necessarily get along the best. So you put a certain material in here and I actually don't know what that is made of on this knife, but uh, it prevents lock st stick and makes it really smooth. Action on this is an absolutely incredible. It's running on multi-row bearings. And if you know anything about Shiro's or bearings, uh, their system it's incredible. It floats, uh, floats home. It's not, it's not guillotiny at all. It just floats. Okay. It, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Now the multi-row bearing system itself. Think of it as uh, if this is, if this is your bearing, and you typically put balls around here. You know the multi-row bearings is like three balls in a row that runs in kind of a pinwheel pattern around, rather than in a circle. So it provides uh, stability, in theory, side-to-side um, -side stability as it spreads the load of the blade and the forces out over a larger area. It also makes it super silky smooth and makes you go, oh yeah, when you're feeling it in hand. And it's also written right here. MRBS. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can. I'll grab my flashlight just to see it. But it's written on the inside of the frame there. MRBS. So there you go. If it's single row bearing, it'll look like a little sun, which uh, would be on this guy here. 
don't know if you can see that or not, but it'd be right here, it'd be like a little sun. And I don't know if the camera's gonna freak out when I hit it with light, like it always does. But yeah, single row bearings. So there you go. Um, in terms of the fit and finish on this, I will say this. The G10 is truly a step up from other G10s, just because it's all still machined. You've got a beautiful pattern put into it. You still have all the fine milling work that's done right around here. Same pattern that's on a lot of the other ones, just beautiful. It's all smooth, no hot spots. And then when you get into the clip, so the clip itself balances itself onto the frame. So when it's in your hand and you're, you're holding it in your palm like that, your palm weight puts pressure on it and transfers that to the frame rather than the lock bar because of the way they angle the clip onto the, onto the frame itself. Hopefully you can see that. But it just kind of, there's like a little milled pocket there, angles onto it there. Super cool. Underneath the clip, there's an absolute ton of milling. That's just super, super sexy. And uh, you know, you hit it with different light, it looks amazing. Same with following these lines down here. And then same with the lines up by the tab itself. And those patterns are on both sides. So remember earlier I was talking about the pattern in the G10. Well, if I flip this around and look up here, look, the same pattern is still there. But now <clears throat> it's in titanium versus G10. It's truly remarkable. We flip this around and we look at the other side of the pocket clip. You can still see all the milling on it as well. Hopefully you're watching in 4K and hopefully the camera's in focus so you can see what the hell I'm talking about. But it is an absolute work of art for a, you know, 600 and... I think these guys are 625 or 650, something like that, US, maybe 600. Uh, they're all over the place right now, but... Uh, for what you're getting, it's half the price of the high-end, you know, Turtle or Quantum Gen 2. It's uh, whew, great value considering they're running on multi-row bearings. It's tremendous value. Now, this one is also, what do we got here? There's no backspacer. So as you can see here, and if we grab that Turtle once again, I, I don't have a Quantum Gen 2. It's crazy. Um, if we grab a Turtle, you'll see what their backspacer typically looks like, right? So this is, uh, this is blank. So, you know, when we're talking price points, well, you have to get it from somewhere. So they're putting standoffs instead of a backspacer, which is totally fine. It's not a big deal. Just adds to the more user characteristic of it. We've got the Bane mask or Hannibal mask as uh, David refers to it as. Three pins. And what that is, is it's, you look how tight things are to that blade. If you put a bigger uh, pin there, you'd have to elongate the handle on this. So what they do is they put those little pins in there and uh, it just kind of shortens the, the overall pocket size of that and uh, provides a little bit of protection. Now, I have seen people break these. Um, I've had lots of customers buy these and uh, I don't hear anything about it, um, but they do pop out of the handles if you take the knife apart. So if you want to remove them and run it raw dog, I'm certainly Sure you can because, uh, let's grab an F95, and I don't recommend doing that by the way. But if you look at an F95 NL, it doesn't come with any. So I don't know if that's a new thing they're doing, or if it's a design thing and it needs to be there, or maybe it doesn't need to be there on the F95 NL. Um, but I am very curious because the tolerances are very similar, but yet this one runs raw dog and this one doesn't. So. I'm kind of curious, it could just be a design thing, but that is the first F95 I've seen without those pins there. And I'm trying to think, do I have, I don't have any other F95s with those pins that I don't, f do I? No, they all have backspacers, and I'm just trying to think here, looking through the collection. I think, I don't have any other low end F95, or lower end F95s other than the NLs. They're all either those or the Turtle, so, which is a backspacer. Speaking of the backspacer, how do you hang your lanyard on this? Well, we've got a hole right here. Some people like it, some people hate it. I personally don't mind it. I like when it's built in like that. And uh, you know, if you bust it, you drop it, you've got bigger problems, hopefully, <laughs> but uh, you can just replace the scale and there's your hole back. On the turtle, which I just put away once again, 
uh, we put we build the lanyard hole into the uh, the back spacer itself which uh, where the heck did I go oh. so you can kind of see that you have the back spacer let's put this down you have the back spacer and then that lanyard hole as you can see is built into the back of it which is nice because from the side you don't have a hole to look at and you, you still have the practicality of having a, a lanyard hole there if you or a loop if you really wanted to whereas on my stellar which i showed earlier that's a point of contention is that people see that hole and they get a little like oh it kind of takes away the sight lines and makes it look more or whatever um you know there's two camps there they love it or hate it or in between which is, I guess, three camps. I'm kind of in the middle camp. I don't really care. Um, I think it's part of the design. I think it, I, I don't mind it at all. But for the purists, they definitely like having it built into the backspacer. But when you don't have a backspacer, then you have to put it somewhere, and that's where it ends up, is part of the handle there. Not a big deal. So, flipper tab is still positioned right up front on top. Behind the flipper tab, it's all milled out and quite comfortable for uh, when you fire this guy open. It's nice and smooth, lots of rounded edges, etc. As demonstrated there. The jimping is quite nice. It fits your hand well. You know, could you elongate it? Sure, you know, but it's part of the Persian design of the sweep. And if we go right up to their top end, I've got a quantum sprint run, uh, custom division. The jimping's very similar. So, you know, it, you're getting a lot of sheer raw value there at a very, very nice price point. Um, on the blade itself, if we extend past the jimping, it's still nice and flat up top. And as you go down the blade, you can certainly choke up and do some more fine slicing tasks like uh, polish the blade or cut onions or tomatoes or whatever you want to do. It's, it's totally... A, I think more people are going to use these knives than uh, some of the other ones because of the price point. So it's a real slicey, nice grind on it. But you can choke up, which is awesome. Um, I talked about... You know, one of the things that does kind of annoy me about this is the fact that they are doing some laser etching on the blade. I, I don't... I'm not a big fan of that. I kind of wish that they kind of stayed away from that. I wish that they would just kind of like put a logo on the handle somewhere or wherever because that is going to, if you're using the knife, slowly wear off. And that's kind of annoying. Uh, but that's just me and uh, I'm OCD with that stuff. But nice, nice grind. I think the Ursus line are a machine grind rather than a hand grind. Um, I, I remember hearing that somewhere and it would make sense because if you look at it, it's very consistent across all of the knives. There's like no mistakes. So it's done really well, which tells me it's probably machine ground, which is fine. Um, what else? I talked about the beautiful milling on the clip, which just looks tremendous at all the different angles. I talked about the weight inside, the reduction how it floats home. Uh, I think I've kind of hit all the topics on this guy. I think the beige looks really good. It's kind of a desert camo vibe to it. And uh, versus like you look at it on a lot of the web stores, they look really bright brown, almost like a yellow. And it's, it's really muted. It's a really muted color. I think it's gonna be really good for field work because you're not, it's not gonna show dirt as much as say black wood, as funny as that is. But I think it looks good. And sadly, if we're comparing them in the uh, three in the lineup that I have anyway in the store, um, you know, which, which one do you think looks the best? You know, I really like the blue, personally. But the beige is really growing on me. Just because it's so natural and just looks good. Now, the one thing is if you're using these outside, uh, some people like to pick colors that, you know, aren't really a natural color. So if you lose the knife, it kind of stands out. And unfortunately, I think all three of these are pretty, you know, if you drop them in grass, you know, they're not orange. Um, maybe the blue would stand out a little bit, but black and beige would definitely blend in pretty easily, I think, into some dirt or like think of it as like out on the trails or whatever. So I don't know. I think they all look really, really good. They're not any different from a 
machining perspective, they're all the same. They're all really well done. Oh God, they, you know what? Every time I look at these guys, I just go, I need to just get one of these, write it off. And like, this is like the perfect carry. It's the perfect work knife because it's so light and four inch blade at less than four ounces, which is the golden rule, right? Like this could easily be, you know, much more money considering that it's, um, you know, if they put a carbon scale on this and kept the metal the same, they'd probably charge 900 bucks. Like it's just not us. It's just nuts. It's well made, well built, good solid grind, good bearing system, good action. Very light lockup, which is nice. It's very smooth, floaty. Hammers out, man. Very smooth. Love this knife. I just uh, sometimes forget about it. It's kind of a a little bit of a diamond in the rough, and now that it, they've added a new color, it just kind of brings up those old vibes of why I really loved it in the first place. You know, one thing is, if you look at the Quantum versus the F95 on the flipper tab, it's built in kind of like an angle on the handle here, right? That line stays true. Some people like that, some people like the F95, where on the F95, it's kind of pulled back and gives you a little bit of a spot to fall into. From a distance to your finger, I think the Quantum's a little further to reach, but not by much. Which one do I like more? I like them both, honestly. Uh, they're both great. I think the F95 is like the original. Think of the F95 as like a Sebenza. It's their classic model. The Quantum's kind of a newer model. And, uh, you know, Persian, nice drop point on it. It's just, it's nice. It's a real nice knife. So anyway, I've talked about that. I've talked about the inlay on the back. The beautiful machining, the clip, the multi-row bearings, the Chromax being basically um, their, you know, the targeted LMAX. And I've talked about the G10 scale just being super light. And, uh, you know, I, I really truly think that if I compare this with my Zahn or my Sebenzas, I like the, the quality of this is higher. It's in, it's so obvious in hand, like it's, it's a, it's a level up and people don't really understand that about this knife maker. And then when you go up another level into their higher end production knives, it's it's a whole other level from, from this, right? It's not much higher, but it's another level. And then you jump up into the, the quantum that I was showing earlier, these you know custom division, sprint run, whatever's, and it's a whole other level. Like it's just nuts. But uh, beautiful knives, probably my favorite brand, as you can probably see on the uh, on the site. There's a lot of them. Um, oh, I should also say the hardware on these. Um, yes, they look like a flathead screwdriver, and they essentially are, but just remember, they're not. You, you know, uh, if you're going to mess around with it, use a softer material than the Thai hardware. Use like a penny, because it's uh, softer material, or use like a credit card that's folded on itself to kind of get that same... You know, they're not Loctited in typically, I don't think. Uh, so, but let's be honest, you're not going to need to take these apart. They're dead center, right out of the showroom, right? They're, it's a sheer gore off. They, uh, they're kind of like the, in my opinion, the Ferraris right now of pocket knives. So, yeah, that is the beige Quantium Ursus. And uh, in G10, I think it looks terrific. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, go on the website, bladezilla.ca. Uh, like I said, it's available in dark blue, black, and I think green. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to plan on carrying green. I can certainly get them. Just let me know. And I can bring some in. Um, otherwise, it's a great knife. Really excited to show it to you. And take a look. And bring it into your living room, onto your phone, on your TV, whatever. And uh, yeah, pretty cool knife. All right, guys, that is it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Peace.